Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to discuss about the mental boundaries in which we all are residing at and hold on to them like they are our real worlds. This video is part 1 and is made from the chapter 14 of my book, A Mental Metamorphosis of Mind, A Proven and Yogic Way of Attracting Health, Wealth, and Akashic Record. Have you ever seen a pack of wolves reacting to a wolf from a different pack? Acceptance of a stranger or intruder in a pack is not casual. How about bees from other hives? Bees from each hive are coated with a specific chemical that separates them from one another. This is why a bee from one hive cannot enter another hive unless the guard bees allow them. The guards will allow them to enter only if the hives are close to each other. We may think that all ants we see on the ground from the same species can live harmoniously in any colony. No. If the lost ant doesn't share the same pheromone scent as the ants from the new territory, the stranger will be rejected and killed by other ants regardless of their species. All living organisms tend to form a group of their own kind, except some creatures that live in loneliness. A member of a group cannot easily join another group regardless of their species. If one group's members want to get into another group's, there are some criteria to be fulfilled by those members to be accepted. For example, let's talk about ants. If intruder ants can spray themselves with the required scent of the colony, they will be accepted in the colony. Thus, all organisms are divided among themselves into different groups, and they can be hostile when those other groups come face to face. It is not practically possible to form a single pack of wolves globally, a single colony of all similar species of ants, or one giant hive of all bees that live worldwide. Are we humans different from those creatures? Is it possible for a human to break the boundary of any group? If aliens watch us from the sky, they may think we all human as a single unit, but in reality, humans have more divisions within the species than any other organisms. Ants from the same colony, at least, perform as a single unit, but humans living in the same community are divided into various groups in the name of colors, race, social status, religions, social groups or clubs, nationality, and as many divisions as they can form. If a person is not a member of a specific social group or religious firm, he is less likely to get help in need. Even if some groups come forward for assistance, the group wants him to be a member of their group. Whether it is in the deep dark Amazon forest or in the chaotic city of New York, groupism utterly exists, a person always looks for a group closest to the group he belonged to. A new Chinese guy in New York must likely to look for a Chinese community to live in the city. So does an Indian guy, or Hispanic guy, or any other person of a different race. A Christian person prefers the Christian community, and so do other religions followers. When I was in the basic training of the US Army, I noticed a pattern of human nature in selecting his team to hang out and spend time with. In training, I met an Indian friend, and he told me that he was eyeballing every day to see if there was anyone from India or at least someone from South Asia. I saw a few Chinese soldiers making their own small group, and all Hispanic soldiers were in the same group regardless of the country of their originality. African Americans had a separate hangout team, and white soldiers were together in a small group. African soldiers were hanging out with us, Indians, Nepalese, Arabic. When we humans go to a new place, we are more inclined to look for people who share our common background. First, we check our nationality background. If it does not match, we go for the closest quality to match, we look for the person from the neighboring country like the Indian friend was happy to see me because we would share a similar background. If nothing matches, we look for the status, if the person is born a citizen or an immigrant. All immigrants stay together regardless of their race, color, religious belief, and language. By all means, we humans are different in so many ways. But naturally and biologically, we are the same. Humans are the only creature that does not have more than one species. If we look at other animals such as birds, dogs, cows, insects, fishes, etc., they have several species. For example, there are thousands of different species of birds in the world. For the human, there is only one species known as Homo sapiens at the present time. Despite belonging to the same species, we all humans have divided our unity into smaller parts. As a result, a person belongs to some groups or mental boundaries without realizing that he is free and only belongs to humanity. Why do we have so many groups? Ants, bees, or other species living in the same colony or hive do not have various subdivision within the group. Only we with higher consciousness have a tendency to use reasoning to divide the race into several fragmentations. We can create or destroy any division and subdivision of human created groups. There are more than 4,200 estimated religions globally, and they may come under other main religions. This means, within the same religion, there are different groups and their values. Jean-Jacques Rousseau once said, a man is born free, and everywhere he is in chains. But a man, 
When he is born, he is not free, he is bound by the fate of the family where he is born. If he is born in a Christian family, he is a Christian by default. When he makes his own decision and jumps out of the religious box, he automatically falls into another box. He replaces the old religious group with a new similar one or entirely different group. Even if he completely deserts all religions of the world, he falls into a group of atheists. It is nearly impossible to escape these groups. We are attracted to specific groups based on our belief system. Our belief system is constructed with the way we are brought up. A person can break the belief system and come out of it but cannot wholly free himself from the entire group system of social life unless he knows the secret of doing it. Let us suppose that there is an infinite water body just like an ocean. An endless number of aquariums with different sizes are situated on the bottom of it. For the fishes living in Aquarium A, their entire world is not bigger than the size of the aquarium itself. Suppose each aquarium is infinitely large and can contain an infinite number of fishes. In this case, all fishes living in that aquarium share the same resources. If a fish from Aquarium B manages to enter Aquarium A, Fish B will experience an entirely different world. The shapes of both aquariums may be different. So, assuming that fishes are intelligent and would recognize the difference. Let's say that all aquariums are interconnected with tunnels, and fishes can move around to several aquariums. Every time they get into a new aquarium, they experience a new world, some world may be larger than other. If they live in the same aquarium for their entire life, they will end up believing that nothing exists outside those aquariums. If some fishes manage to break the aquarium and come out of it to the vast ocean instead of moving around the aquariums, they will enjoy the vast water, resources, and freedom. Now, let's see this aquarium effect of the human mind. Humans have created so many mental aquariums to enclose themselves. I have noticed a lot of people changing religions nowadays. From Hindu to Christians, Christians to Muslims, Muslims to Buddhists, and vice versa. If you have been grown up with a particular religious belief and continued living with that belief for 20 years and all of a sudden, you convert into another religion. Since you were dissatisfied with the previous one, you have a higher chance to love the new belief system. A lot of things you come across there will be new to you. As a result, you will find this new religion more practical, robust, and appealing. If this fact is wrong, why is the conversion of faith is on both ways? I have seen Christians converted into Hindus and Hindus converted into Christians. If one aquarium contains the truth and all other are fake, then why all aquariums are full of people? How people find peace in all belief systems. If one Christian gets converted into Hindu, he feels like he found the secret of the universe. Similarly, the feeling of new converted Christians is the same. This is only an example related to religions. We have created numerous mental aquariums to enclose ourselves, such as feminism, transgenderism, politics, clubs, humanitarian teams, and so on. Thank you for watching and do not forget to watch part 2 as well. For more videos subscribe to my channel.